What's up, Funkheads? The biggest Funko Pop hunting day of the year was yesterday, July the 20th. And I gotta say that this year has been the most hectic and hardest year yet to try and get your hands on all those shared exclusives. I was so sleep deprived by Thursday night that I ended up going to bed like at 8 o'clock, feeling like a really old man. Usually I'm up to like midnight, but that's around the time that all the online action started the day before. And I was up until about 5 a.m. trying to get pops from all those stores that I wasn't going to be able to visit the next day. And it was definitely an exercise in frustration. It did get started off pretty good though with Amazon. They were the first ones to put up their exclusives. That was around 9 p.m. my time, which is West Coast time. And it was relatively painless. Amazon is used to having a lot of traffic on their site, so it didn't slow down at all. And Amazon is pretty good about acquiring a whole bunch of their exclusive pops. They're one of the online retailers that have their exclusive pops available for the longest because they do have a huge stock of them. And to their credit, it got here pretty fast. Ordered it Wednesday night, and by Friday morning, it was here. And in the past, I've been pretty hard on Amazon about the way they ship their pops, but... This is okay, they have padding on both sides, and that was smart that they put it in the middle so it doesn't shift from side to side and get these corners bent up. So let's see how the rest of it looks. And it is banged up, so spoke too soon. Yeah, this was definitely from the package taking a hit. I did notice, like I actually saw the UPS guy drop this off at my house. I should have filmed him because I had a feeling he was going to toss it and he did. Instead of just bending over and placing it down on the ground, he tossed it. And um, I'm not sure if this is where this dent came from, but maybe it was. I mean, that does seem like it was from him tossing it around. There's a dent right here too. But it's on the bottom, thankfully, and not on the front. But, you know, I do wish that they were more careful about that. Too bad they didn't double box this one. Um, Amazon actually has been double boxing their exclusive pops. I don't know if because this is a 6-inch, they didn't. Um, but yeah, this guy does look pretty cool. I wasn't originally going to get him. But, you know, once the day hits and the excitement of buying these pops hits me, I tend to buy ones that... I wasn't planning to, but I'm glad I did it with this one because he does look cool. Just unfortunate about the damage. Pretty consistent with Amazon. Um, it's always a gamble ordering from them. So after that, the next site to put some pops live was the HBO shop. And they had available the Mountain, a really cool version of the Night King in this like smoky gray translucent plastic that I really wanted. Musashi and Young Ford with his face opened up. By the time I got to the site though, the Mountain and the Night King were sold out and those were the two I really wanted. So I didn't bother getting the other ones even though those were still available. I did notice too that on the HBO shop, the Night King was only $10. Every other site had the regular sized pops for 15 bucks. And the Mountain was 15 bucks, but not the Night King. That was kind of interesting to me. But yeah, missed out on that one. The next site to go live with their pops was Hot Topic. And this is where I had to make a tough choice. Because my Hot Topic is usually pretty good about stocking all their pops and having mint boxes and just having plenty to go around. But this year, I also wanted to get pops at Barnes & Noble. And Hot Topic and Barnes & Noble both opened up at 9 o'clock. So you kind of had to choose one or the other. Because by the time you got to the other, they're most likely going to be sold out of some of the things you want. And I know that Barnes & Noble tends to run their site with like a 56k potato. And it always crashes. So as soon as the Hot Topic Pops went live, I did jump on the ones I wanted, which were T-Dog, Steve, Negascott, and The Coon. I actually wanted to get Luna Lovegood as well, but for some reason I forgot to add her to my cart. I was trying to do it quickly because I wanted to get the pink Marvin the Martian, and I knew that if I wasted too much time trying to shop around, I was going to miss out on that Marvin the Martian, and that is what happened. Because the site did slow down a little bit with the increased traffic, but it was still working. But by the time I got to my cart and tried to exit, and pay, Marvin the Martian wasn't available anymore. I feel like if I would have just put Marvin the Martian in my cart and checked out right away, I might have been able to get him and just take that extra $2 hit on the shipping, no big deal, and then go back and get my other pops. In hindsight, that's what I should have done, but it's no big deal because the ones I really wanted were Negascott, Steve, and the Coon. 
All the pops I talk about ordering online should start staggering in in the next week or so. And I'll open those up on camera too so you guys can see how they come. So the next site I noticed that went live with their pops was Toys R Us. And I wanted two from them, but I never saw Bruce Wayne online. But I did hear that a lot of people were able to pick them up in store. I just couldn't get to the store fast enough to pick them up. So I'm not sure if my store just didn't get him or he just sold out before I was there. Hopefully they get another shipment in. Sometimes Toys R Us does get more than one shipment. But I was able to order Tinkles with the ghost in a jar, which is the number one I wanted from Toys R Us and in my top five of most wanted of these con exclusives. So hopefully she comes in undamaged because Toys R Us doesn't have the best shipping practices. Box Lunch went up around the same time that the Hot Topic site did. And strangely, their site was really smooth. It wasn't slow for me at all. I think maybe because everybody was on Hot Topic trying to get that Marvin the Martian. So I think I must have gotten to Box Lunch before the big swarm of people. And I was able to get the Mountain, another one of the pops I really wanted this year because I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. And I also got the Black Lodge version of Cooper and Laura. And the Masked Elliot for Mr. Robot. So around midnight my time, GameStop finally went live. And holy shit was that a super, super frustrating experience. Definitely one of the most frustrating sites that I had to deal with last night. I was able to add all the pops I wanted into my cart, enter my shipping details, but I couldn't get past that. As soon as I entered all my information for where to ship it, I'd click next to go to payment and the site would crash every single time. And it would be really slow. This continued for like the next two, three hours. I just couldn't check out. Eventually the site traffic slowed down the site speed sped up, but pops just started disappearing from my cart, started getting sold out. So after about three or four hours of frustration with GameStop, I was only able to purchase Mintberry Crunch and Mr. Clark. I really wanted to get all the GameStop ones online because the GameStops in my area don't get very many of each character. And there's always a ton of people waiting. Unless I take my chances and drive out to a further GameStop and try to get there before they open. But even then, there could be a lot of people waiting there. So if they only get like four pops of each character, and there's already like 10 people in line, it's going to be pretty tough to get what you want. So that was the big question mark for me the next day, was am I going to be able to get these GameStop pops? Another big question mark was Target. Lately, Target has been just awful. The workers have been rude. It's been like pulling teeth to get the pops from them, if they even have them. Everybody knows what happened with the glow-in-the-dark Qui-Gon Jinn. Target has been pretty shitty, but to their credit, when Target went live with their pops, their site was running smoothly, they're used to getting a lot of traffic, and I was able to get Bodhi and Interplanetary Batman with no problem. So good job Target, hopefully they pack those pops up pretty nicely, and don't just toss them in an oversized box for them to bounce around and get all jacked up. So you're not off the hook yet Target. So sometime around 2am I think it was, Barnes & Noble finally went live, and of course it crashed right away. And I was already frustrated with the GameStop website, so I really didn't want to deal with another website whose server appeared to be made out of a jar of mayonnaise. So I just thought to myself, okay, go to Barnes & Noble early tomorrow. You already got the ones from Hot Topic. You'll be good. I'll also mention that FYE's site was running pretty smoothly, and I was able to add the Power Twins 3-pack and the Betty and Wilma Rock Candies to my cart. And I got so far as to where I'm going to pay, but I stopped myself because the 3-pack was 40 bucks which I think is overpriced because only two of the pops in there are even full size. The Benny and Wilma were only 15 bucks each. Okay, that's cool. But what stopped me was the ridiculous shipping fee. It was almost $18 to ship. $18 and with tax. So to get that three pack and two rock candies was like 90 something dollars. I'm like, no way. I'm not gonna spend like 95 bucks just out of principle, even though I wanted them, I think I'd rather use that 90 bucks to get like one of my grails. Not that I do that either, but I'm definitely not gonna pay that much for these figures. FYE really needs to figure out their shipping system because 18 bucks for three items is really excessive. And it's not like they do a fabulous job shipping them. If I knew they were gonna put it in a box, inside a box with bubble wrap and a nice dirty box on the outside, yeah, okay, I understand why you're charging that much. Okay, so after all of that online shopping all night, I took a quick two hour power nap. And I'm glad I woke up when I did because I got a message from fellow YouTuber Wisconsin Clark that that Ren and Stippy Happy Happy Joy Joy 2 pack was up on the Funko shop. 
I got on there just in time and was able to get him. Like seriously, at the last minute. Because as soon as I checked out, I went back to look if he was still on there and he was sold out. So I feel like I got one of the last ones. With shipping and handling and everything, he did come out to 40 bucks. But I really wanted him and what can I say, I have an addiction. Alright, so Barnes & Noble was slated to open up at 9 o'clock. And last year, Barnes & Noble was the last place I went to. I ended up going to Barnes & Noble around 10.30 after I had gone to GameStop and Hot Topic. And they still had a ton of all their pops. So I figured, eh, I didn't have to get there that early. So I got there around 8.30. And man, there was already, I want to say around 15 people in line. So I was like, oh shit. Maybe I had to get here like at 8. So I really wasn't feeling too confident. On a side note... On a side note though, some of us pop hunters really have to start working on our hygiene. It was quite a motley crew waiting for these pops. And the guy next to me started talking and he blasted me with maybe the worst shit breath ever. Like it was a combination of like rotting animal carcass, garbage water, and just straight up shit. Like I almost threw up. It was so bad. But anyway, the Barnes & Noble manager came out around 10 minutes before 9 and said that everybody could only get two pops. One of each style. Like you couldn't get two Tiggers, for example. And of course, everybody started groaning, but I actually thought that was good, mainly because I was in the back of the line. And even though it meant that maybe everybody couldn't get one of each, it did mean that everybody would be able to get at least one or two things that they really wanted. So I thought that was very fair and a smart decision by Barnes & Noble. By the time I got there, though, the guy in front of me got the very last scare glow. So I missed out on that by one person. I didn't even get to see how many they actually had, but from stuff I read and other videos I've seen, the scare glows and the ticks were the ones that had the least amount of pops shipped to the stores. But I was able to get at least one Tigger, who is for Metal Nerd, because I'm not a big Winnie the Pooh fan, even though this is a really nice looking pop. I got this for him because he wasn't able to get one, but he did get me a couple of pops that I wasn't able to get. So... One hand washes the other and got this Tigger for Metal Nerd. And what I really wanted from Barnes & Noble was this Aragon and Arwen 2-pack. I'm really, really liking these new Lord of the Rings pops. And these ones look really good. I really like the details they gave them. Like him holding the pipe, the way Arwen's holding the sword, her little scar. Really a nice looking set. So I'm glad I was able to get this one. They did have quite a few of these. But, not as much as this Lorax. And he looks alright. I did notice that almost every single one of them had a ton of the yellow flocking from the mustache on the eyes. It looked very bad. And look how thick his like eyelash things are. They're just way, way too thick. I think originally those were supposed to be orange or yellow. And I think that would have been better. Because that is just way, way too thick. I don't know why they decided to make them like that. Because it doesn't look accurate. I mean, yeah, I guess they're drawn, you know, black. But I wish they would have figured out a way to not make them look so thick like that. And honestly, sometimes I feel like some of these pops that aren't produced as well as the others, they go, whoa, man, like, we can't put that in store because that's going to warm the shelf. And I do feel like sometimes with these pops that didn't come out as nice, they will make them convention exclusives because this sticker right here will make a lot of people buy something they wouldn't normally buy. I mean, I would have normally gotten this one because I am collecting the Dr. Seuss pops, but I wouldn't have gotten the flock one. I would have gotten the regular version because I do think those just look nicer to me. But yeah, I do sometimes think that it's very strategic which pops they use for San Diego Comic-Con because of the power of this sticker. And also very plentiful at Barnes & Noble is this Harry Potter on his broom where he's playing Quidditch and he catches a snitch. I just think this is a fabulous pop and if you're only going to own one Harry Potter pop, this one is pretty perfect, I think. It's dynamic looking, it's well painted, it's well done. And this is what I think these SDCC exclusives are all about. Just a really, 
really great pop. Even though I'm not a big Harry Potter fan or collector, I just had to get this one because it is so well done. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that I did get four different pops from Barnes & Noble. Once the line had died down, they let you go back and grab another two and make another transaction. Only two at a time, but that's how I was able to get the four I needed. Originally, my plan was to get Tigger and Scareglow because I knew those were going fast. But since Scareglow sold out, I did grab Tigger and the two-pack first. And then came back for Harry Potter and the Lorax just because there were so many of them. But four out of five from Barnes & Noble, not bad. So since I was last in line at Barnes & Noble, the GameStop in that same area already had a big huge line from everybody waiting at Barnes & Noble, finishing before me and getting over there in line before they opened. And since I didn't need anything from Hot Topic, I decided to drive to a smaller town to a GameStop that's not near any other store that sells pops. So I figured my chances of encountering less pop hunters were better there, and they were. Got there around 9.40 or so, about 20 minutes before they open, and didn't see one person in sight. So I decided to chill out for a bit. About five minutes before it opened, I did see a guy that just looked like he was there to buy pops. Walk right past GameStop into the Jamba Juice. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe he wasn't here. But right when that curtain started to go up, I saw him walk out of Jamba Juice and like get, you know, get into the GameStop right before me. So I was like, all right, big deal. Just one guy in front of me. But he did go right for the Joker Batman, which is one of the ones I really wanted. And for some reason, this GameStop only had one Joker Batman, which was extremely fishy and shady to me. Every other report I saw, people were saying that their GameStops had a lot of Joker Batmans. And all the images I saw, it looked like Joker Batman was one of the ones that GameStop was getting the most. So for this GameStop, only having one Joker Batman available right when they opened with only one person in front of me, just seemed like something wasn't on the up and up. And I do feel like the employees were holding those for friends or for themselves because I highly doubt that their shipment only came in with just one Joker Batman. If they didn't have any, then I might believe that they didn't get the Joker Batmans because that happens. But the fact they only had one made me think that those were being held for employers or their friends. So I missed out on him, but luckily, fellow YouTuber Metal Nerd picked one of those up for me. So I am gonna get my Joker Batman. Thanks a lot, Metal Nerd, good looking out. They did have several of maybe one of the most coveted pop two packs of this entire con, the Holographic Princess Leia and R2-D2. Really awesome, even though I do wish it was just a Holographic Leia. But hey, they threw that R2-D2 in there probably to be able to sell this for 30 bucks. I can't blame them. People are going to buy it anyway. And I really do like that sculpt of Leia. I do hope that they come out with a full color version of her. Or maybe one like this with her hood up and in an action pose with a gun would be cool too. Just an updated version of Leia because I do like that hood up. But yeah, really happy to have this one. And this R2 is a new sculpt. And they put the bobble in his actual dome instead of his legs. And yeah, it looks alright, even though it does look like his head is propped up a little too high up there. Um, but overall, this is nice. And I did get a good one because some of the layers looked a little rough. Not the paint job so much, but some of the some of the sculpt had extra pieces on it that like weren't cleanly cut off. Or her head was like twisted all the way around in the box. So you had to open it to fix it. And I know a lot of people don't like opening these. And I did hear that the stands on these two are glued on. So I'm going to bust this open just to see if that's just a rumor or what. And no, it's not a rumor. She does not come off her stand. Usually these come off fairly easily, but I can see. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but I do see a little bit of glistening underneath her feet there. So, yeah, she is glued on here, and I'm not sure why. Um, I don't know if that's just a manufacturing mistake or maybe Star Wars is cracking down on Funko, like saying that these stands have to be attached to these figures because that's the way they get around the licensing because I believe it's Hasbro 
that has a license for figures of this size, um, Star Wars figures of this size. So I think the way they get around that is putting a stand on them. And since people could just take them off and display them without the stand, it was kind of a cheap way to get around that. So maybe they're cracking down and they're gluing these on, or maybe it was just a mistake. Who knows, but I know a lot of people aren't gonna be happy with that. Um, I personally like the stands, but I know a lot of people don't. So that's kind of shitty. Actually, now I'm curious to see if Snoke is glued onto his stand as well. And nope, he isn't. So yeah, not sure what went on with that Leia. Now this Tony Stark is another one that I was on the fence about. Because I'm not a big fan of the pop characters holding helmets because... It throws the whole scale off, even though I know that sounds ridiculous to say because the pop heads are so out of scale. But yeah, it just makes it look like he's holding a helmet for like a baby or a toy helmet or something. But it does still look pretty cool. And since Tony Stark is one of my favorite characters, I knew I was going to regret not getting this guy. So I picked him up as well. And I was also able to pick up Man Bat, one of the pops I wanted the most. Especially because he was the very first villain to appear in Batman the Animated Series. One of the best Batman properties I think ever. And they did do a good job with him. I like those yellow eyes and that head sculpt and those wings. Really a cool pop. And I'm happy to add him to my animated collection. And I also picked up the rock candy of Gwenpool. And just like the Lorax, I feel like... The production on her wasn't great because this was the best one and her paint job is super fuzzy, super messy. Um, and the ones they had there were worse. They were really bad. And this also makes me think like maybe Funko looked at this one and were like, you know what? If you make this a common, it's just going to warm the shelves. Maybe our distributor is going to complain that they're just not selling. And maybe they won't be buying as many rock candies in the future because she did come out pretty sloppy. So maybe, you know, some genius at Funko was like, well, why don't you slap a sticker on it, man? People love that sticker. And I don't blame them because, yeah, like the fact that it's a summer convention exclusive does make it cooler and um, probably going to guarantee that they all sell out. So, yeah. I do think that that's why they made this a summer convention exclusive. Maybe I'm paranoid. Maybe it's just a conspiracy. But this figure definitely could have been done a lot better. And I guess it's hard to show up on the camera. But in person, these are pretty bad. And maybe if you saw these in person, you can let me know in the comments below if they were sloppy as well. But it is a really good sculpt. And I like the character. And I do like her pose. So I did pick it up anyway. But yeah, that was my GameStop experience. Oh, I'll also note that this GameStop also didn't have any of the Negaducks. I wanted to pick up a Negaduck for Popcom, but I did also find it kind of funny that they had absolutely no Negaducks and only one Joker Batman. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But luckily, Franklin McGinnis was able to get an extra Negaduck, and he's going to be sending it to Popcom for me. So... A lot of good dudes on YouTube, a lot of awesome pop collectors helping each other out. That's always nice. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching me babble on about my SDCC hunt day and online hunting the night before. I will open up all those packages on camera so you can see how they came. Hopefully, this Snoke doesn't set the trend for my SDCC pops being damaged. Hopefully, these companies start putting a little bit more thought in how they ship them. All right, guys, let me know how your hunt went. Thanks for watching and have a good one.